who knows nothing can understand nothing. Plunge deeper into the darkness and your heart will grow even stronger. Good tidings, everybody. Welcome to the Answer Report podcast, the longest running Kingdom Hearts podcast that you've ever even thought of. You could have thought of a podcast that ran longer, but you can't because we're the only one. Also, the longest lasting. The longest lasting. You know what it's a, you could equate it to? What's that? You know, like when you're fucking eating some fucking... Fuck, what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't fucking think what they're called. Gobstoppers? What? Uh, no, the, the fucking gum that doesn't last long. <laughs> the, oh, Juicy Fruit? No, no, not Juicy Fruit. Juicy Fruit does not last long. No, the other one, like the one with like the fucking stripes. Fruit Stripes Gum. Is that it? <laughs> Is that, that what it's called? Yeah, sure. I can't fucking remember. Yikes. Stripes. Fruit Stripes Gum. Anyway. He's peaked the shit out of that mic. <laughs> God damn it. I completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I completely forgot just, what I was saying. Just, I just he, looked at him like, he said, dude. Just cat chimped me. I he just cat chimped me. I don't podcast. know what I was saying. Oh. Anyway, confirmed longest lasting podcast on the internet. Thank you. Dude, I was on the way home, had all my music on shuffle. Last call came on, and I was fucking vibing, bro. By Kanye. Oh, yeah. I was like, let's fucking go. I just fucking. All the way down the fucking street, dude. It's a good song. I'm Mike, and with me as always is my brother, Jason. Yeah, we haven't done that part yet because you went into some fucking <laughs> cat champ ass fruit stripes gum shit that you don't even know what the fuck you were talking about, dude. And now here we are. The longest running the longest podcast. Running, yeah. Kingdom Hearts podcast. How are you so much fucking louder than when we <laughs> test, dude? I don't understand you. I go, hey, say something. And you go, ah, I'm Jason. And then it's still, you still, then you just talk in a normal, booming ass voice. And it's like, <laughs> blah. I feel like I talk the same in the test. No, dude, you don't. You do not. It's a guttural thing. I guess, dude. You just get so fucking hype for the longest running <laughs> Kingdom Hearts podcast, which is also a nightmare right now. This is the worst podcast we ever done. It's understandable that I would get this hype, though. It is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is episode 115 of the worst podcast that's ever existed. Guys, we got a lot going on, okay? We don't. We don't, but we do. No, like, we, in general. We have some housekeeping to do. Yes. Okay. Major housekeeping. Major housekeeping. It's fucking filthy in here. We have to talk about in the podcast. The second annual Dream Drop Social Distance Charity live stream. They didn't think it would happen. They didn't think it would happen. It's I happening. Didn't think it would happen. May twenty first through the twenty third, possibly longer. Oh, shit. Dep uh, that really depends on how much you guys raise for charity, you fucks. We are raising money <laughs> for the Able Gamers Charity. If you're not familiar with the Able Gamers Charity, here's a, little, uh, here's a little excerpt from their website. People with disabilities are at a heightened risk of social isolation, and Able Gamers knows that video games can be the perfect gateway to community participation, lifelong friendships, and unforgettable shared experiences. That's why it's crucial to make, these experience, make sure these experiences are developed with accessibility as a priority and inclusion as the goal. For over a decade and a half, Able Gamers has been pushing the inclusive efforts of the industry forward by training and consulting studios while connecting them directly with players who can share their personal experiences. I love this charity. When I when I when I I've heard of them before, I looked into it. Um and I love the fact that they make gaming accessible for everyone. Absolutely. And I, I just think that's such a cool goal. Last year, uh we did we did uh Doctors Without Borders, specifically their COVID relief fund, because obviously that was um something we felt moved by to do. And it's kind of what pushed on the charity stream to happen in the first place. Yeah. Now this year we want we wanted to do something for gaming because gaming is such an important part of our lives. And you know, something a, a charity like this to me is just 
some of the coolest, most, um, just, just, just the most noble effort for gaming. You know what I mean? To, oh, to yeah. be able to add, to make Absolutely. sure I've made so many friends through gaming Absolutely. and through, through, through video games and, and, and hanging out on Twitch and all this stuff. And I want everybody to be able to have the same kind of experiences I have. Yeah. Exactly. We, Jason and I are very lucky that we, we are able to do that, you know? Absolutely. Um, but not everybody is and able gamers does their best to make sure that everybody is. And I just think that's really cool. And so that's who we're supporting this year with our charity live stream. I hope you guys are, are, are into that. Like we are, um, we, we want to, we want to help all the gamers. You know what I mean? Absolutely. All the gamers. That is who we were. We are uh, raising money for, but I know what you guys really want to hear right now. You want to hear about what's going to happen during this charity stream. How are we going to get your monies for this charity yes, event? Exactly. Last year, we had a wheel. We had a wheel called the Wheel of Destiny. Yes. And let me tell you. A the, wheel that has haunted me for the past year. The Wheel of Destiny is returning. It is returning. In a big way. In a big way. Let's go over the schedule first, I guess. So, starting at 2 p.m. EST on the 21st, I, Mike, hello me, will be doing a Kingdom Hearts 3 speed run to start off the day. He's going to PB. So I'm don't miss PB. it. Don't miss it. If I, PB, PB. if I PB, I donate to charity. If I don't PB, I donate to charity. Wow. So that's cool. Uh, we will have got to be there to find out what he does. We will have some donation incentives for you guys to try and hit. However, the wheel will not be active on this first day. And yes. the reason for that is because Jason will not be with us for the majority of the day because he has to work. Yes. But then we do have... A donation incentive for a first donation incentive will be for the Ansem Report Podcast Live. So if we hit a certain number, which we haven't decided yet, it will be our first donation incentive. That will allow us to do the Ansem Report Podcast Live on Saturday evening. We'll, we'll stop our, uh, we'll break from what we're doing and we'll do it around 5 p.m. EST. Um, if we hit that donation incentive which if we don't i don't know what's wrong with you guys okay it's not gonna be a very hard one to hit. i'm meeting it myself yeah I, I, it, we're gonna meet it okay so if you um that's also gonna be our ansom report podcast for next week we're not gonna have one on friday it'll be saturday night yes uh so not only does that mean that if you aren't there you'll miss all the poggers fucking things that are gonna happen on this stream you have no idea how lit this stream is going to be. There's so many people, so many new people I've met throughout the last year, and it's so freaking cool. We love you guys. Yes. This is going to be the biggest thing of the year. Of the year. Just straight up. Biggest thing of the year. Biggest thing of the year. So, that being said, during the speed run, I believe I'll be alone. Tara could possibly join me at that point. But I'll be alone, so there won't be a lot of, like, shenanigans going on then. It'll just be like, hey, a speed run for charity, you know? Yeah. Then we are going to have a donation poll. Yes. So there will be options. You guys will be able to choose what game we start for the first time on stream when Jason gets home. Yes. And there are three options we have come down to, and I think they're all options that you guys will be, you guys will feel pretty poggers about. Um, the first option is one of the greatest JRPGs of our all time, a cl Super Nintendo classic itself, Chrono Trigger. I've never played it. Never played it. Jason's never played it. So that's one option that you could put your money towards. Another option will be the highly requested Hitman 3. Yeah. Hitman 3, highly requested. You want to see Jason do some wild shit where he assassinates people? Oh, yeah. Love and that. laughs maniacally like an absolute madman freak fiend. And then the third option, <laughs> and probably the favorite to win this poll, but we'll see, the is <laughs> Mass Effect 1 Remastered. Oh, okay? yeah, baby. So the idea is at Shepard the end, Rudolph. when Jason arrives, we'll close that poll, and whatever, whatever game gets the most donation money, we will start right then and there, and we will play that game till about 2 in the morning our time. Maybe longer. No, not longer. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Because at that point, 
we have a very poggers announcement. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Our oh, yes. good friend, Preferred Whale, over there in New Zealand. Yeah. Is going to keep the party going. It doesn't stop. We are going to pass. We are going to raid Preferred Whale at that point. And she's going to stream for the next 10 hours because she's nuts. I tried to talk her out of it. I have the receipts. Yeah. I tried to say, hey, you don't have to go till noon our time. That's okay. Like, we, you can do like six hours, eight hours. And she was like, no, I can do 10 hours easy. She probably said it in a more New Zealand accent than I did. But she was like, I can do 10 hours easy. And she Water said Cage she was, was there. Keen and to he do was 10 like, 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, she did say keen. And Water Cage was like, yep, yeah, no problem. Right. <laughs> so I don't exactly know what Preferred Whale has planned. And we'll probably have more info on that after this podcast goes out because she'll be like why didn't you tell me that you needed to know what i was going to play uh <laughs> for the podcast but she's going to play i'm I'm assuming she's gonna do some sort of melody memory speed run yes probably one of the longer ones would be my guess but i'm not yeah. sure um we but yeah so we'll know that but whale's gonna keep the party going oh yeah that's my point and then when she's done Jason and i will have gotten our beauty sleep oh yeah we'll wake up i'll be fucking beautiful you you always are no, but like really beautiful. He's going to be very beautiful. Like really beautiful. We will wake up and at noon EST is when we will start our playthrough. And by playthrough, I mean trophy hunt of Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. And that is what we will do until we have the platinum. For charity. For charity. And at that point, we will start the wheel spinning. We'll start. The nonsense. Now you may ask, what the fuck is the wheel? I've never what what are you talking about? I wasn't here last year. What's the wheel? Exactly. So the wheel is a very colorful uh wheel of not wheel of fortune style. Wheel of that, doom. Wheel of fortune's <laughs> like on the on the ground this way. This is more like a uh prize wheel, if you will. Yes. And there are quite a few spaces on it, and there's a bunch of Kingdom Hearts stickers on it. And every sticker means something different. Now, you may maybe you're a veteran of of Yes. The Dream Drop Social Distance charity yes. live stream. And you're like, I know what every sticker Maybe you does. qualify for the Super Spaghetti Bros veteran discount. But you don't. At the veteran Because club. we've changed what a lot of the stickers are. Because a lot of them didn't make sense for what we're doing this year. As opposed to just a playthrough of DDD and a trophy hunt. So we're griefing ourselves more in real life. As opposed to griefing ourselves in the game. Yes. Yes. So but that's a little bit different. There's some really exciting stuff on there. Oh, yeah. That some I of them scare me. I, I'm very full frightened. disclosure. <laughs> okay. I will tell you what one is. Cause I did say this on stream too. Uh, last year I ate a hot chicken wing and it was a little lackluster. Like it was hot, but I've, I didn't feel like I was like dying. Yeah. Which Mike is wants to die. <laughs> I have found these cheese balls as in like Cheetos style cheese balls. And I opened the package. Not, not the package to the cheese balls. The packaging the that it was inside, it was in a box, and I opened the box, and I started coughing because I could, I could smell how spicy these fucking cheese balls are. Yeah, it was nuts. I felt like, like tight in my throat because yeah. I was like, I might have to like cough. Like, what the fuck is this? It's insane. How many? Jason's counting the wheel right now, folks. It's like 18, give her. Give yeah. her I, I ran out Jason of Jason lost I, count. I went out of fingies. And then there are two spots on there that proc the mini wheel. Yes. Which those are pretty, they're more intense options. So we have a lot like of stuff that balls. can happen. Yes. And there will be, I believe, um, it will be a certain, every certain dollar amount, which we haven't decided yet because we don't know how to gauge this because like last year we were. We've definitely overestimated how willing you guys were to give to charity. Yeah. And there's, are there's way nuts. more of you now, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared. <laughs> but we're going to decide what monetary amount we spin the wheel, and we spin the wheel. Um, on top of that, we have some incentive goals to hit that will be on the screen in a little bar, right? And I'm not going to reveal to you what they are, but I'm going to read a couple of the titles of them that maybe give you a little, a little hint. The first one, uh, Jason, if you could read, you know what one to read. Dude, I already know what one yeah, to read. Yeah. Let's make things interesting. There's that one. Who I wonder what that is. <laughs> uh, we have. Real ones will know. 
Mike returns to monkey. Okay. Don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, we have pog babies in chat. That one, that one, guys, that one is fucking pog baby, dude. Like that one is pog baby. That one's gonna be really good. And then finally, we have uh, there's more than this. I'm only reading a couple. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm only reading their like funny titles. Pulp percent. Pulp percent might be my favorite one. That one's poggers. That one's pretty dude. poggers. <laughs> um, also, another one of my favorites, and I'm just going to tell you what this one is. Because this has happened two times, and now it's time for their rubber match. Dude, it's only good if it gets to a, like a third fucking event, dude. Like Spider-Man, one, two, three. You know what yep. I mean? This, this <laughs> is the blockbuster fight you guys have been waiting for, but you'll have to meet the charity incentive. And that is Jason versus Yozora 3. And this time, it's on crit. Oh, my God. And I know you guys want to see that because you're freaks. Because you watched me fight Mysterious Figure for fucking 10 hours yesterday. Or whatever it was. It was ridiculous. And I won. But more on that later. Needless to say. Needless to say, this is going to be a hell of a time. For Saturday and Sunday, I don't think we're staying up the whole night, but we are going to fucking, we are, we are going to stay up as long as we can until we lose our sanity. Then we have to go to sleep for a little bit and then we come back the next day and we are going to get through this platinum. Oh yeah. I actually do think the platinum's doable. We we have a good amount already. Like we're not starting from scratch because that would be undoable in a weekend. No. Yeah. Yeah. Not not Uh, possible. But there is a lot of like grindy shit we have to do. Yeah. And a lot of like secret portals and stuff we have to do, but it's not terrible. I think it's going to be um, a little less uh, hysteria inducing than last year when we uh, just played through the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm so fucking excited. I am for this. very, very excited. Um, I, I hope you guys are as well. If you're new to it this year, I, I hope you enjoy it just as much yes. as everybody did last year. And if you're a veteran, I hope you stick with us the whole time, you know? Oh, yeah. Sean underscore AFK is a madman. Yes. Because he pretty much was with us every minute of it last year. For like 40 hours, dude. And I'm not saying you have to do hit. It wasn't 40 hours. It It was was like fucking 50 hours. It was like 28 hours. 60 hours. We made a lot of good memories last year. Yes. We're excited to do it again. Absolutely. And for a good fucking cause. This isn't just. Absolutely. Oh, donate a sub to the streamer he gets two dollars and fifty cents like this is like going to a good cause which is the able gamers charity and i couldn't be more excited about this and it will be a week from today when you're listening to this yeah 2 p.m est if you can't make it the whole time that's okay stop by when you can there's gonna be so much time going on like it, yeah, it's literally you should be uh, able to catch some of it. A whole entire weekend. Um, if you can donate, please do. If you cannot, that is okay too. Just you being there and supporting is just as good. And honestly, sharing it with your friends. Yes, we are going to. Um, I'm gonna have some, uh, some like schedule art up. We have we have some balling fucking art made by our good friend Alex Big oh. Boy. Yeah, he 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 drew us in the uh, dream dot di- dream drop distance cover. I said, hey, make make the cover of the game, dude. Would it be in Jason? And he did it. And it looks it's so good. So good. So we're going to have some some art like that. Please retweet that out. Please uh, yes. share it with your friends. Because, OK, OK. The Ansem Report podcast. While an absolute baller podcast. Not necessarily something you share with all your friends. You know what I mean? They're not a. Hey, how are you going to be the quirky one if you tell them what makes you quirky listening True. to Answer Report Podcast, right? No, confirmed, you're quirky if you listen. I, but you can share an absolutely legendary charity stream with all the boys. I got to tell you, too. Shout out to my man, Swarles Barkley. Because Shout out to Swarles Barkley. I was speed running KH3 yesterday, and he was saying, yo, I got a date tonight. First date. I said, yo, that's, that's Hell good yeah, luck, dude. my man. Hell good yeah. luck. He dabbed and him up virtually. We started giving him some advice. Okay. You know, in the chat. And 
someone said, oh, tell them about the Answer Report podcast. And I said, you know, that maybe, maybe that's not first date material, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, don't, maybe don't tell them about that. And he said, oh, she already knows. What the fuck? And I said, you, you led with that? And he said, well, she asked me what I was doing, and I just casually said, hey, I'm listening to my favorite podcast, the Answer Report podcast. <laughs> and I was like, Swarles, my man. My man. Consequently, consequent, consequently, Consequently, consequentially, yeah, consequentially, yes, I'm saying it weird. Quench, consequentially, uh, she the canceled quenching... the date on him and rescheduled for another night, but <laughs> that wasn't when he told her about the podcast, so I don't think it's related. Yeah. He landed the date with the podcast, right? I think, I think he did. He should have talked about it more, honestly. So, here's the deal tell all the girls you might be into or all the guys you might be into about our podcast because actually, helps. yeah, true, and Confirmed. definitely. <laughs> Definitely tell them about the charity stream because they'll be absolutely. Like, they'll be like, "Whoa, charity, for charity? stream for charity? These guys? What's, what charity is it? Oh, it helps. It helps people who aren't able to normally play video games play video games. What? Actually, that's the legit. dopest charity I've ever heard of. Actually, legit, dude. Super legit. I know we talked for this, talked about this for a long time on this episode, but I felt like we needed to give you guys a primer. We uh, get you guys fucking hype, dude. We had to we had to get you guys hype about it, and we had to give you guys what was gonna happen so you can kind of spread the gospel, so to speak. So we can make this a huge event and we can look at it afterwards like we did last year and go, man, I'm so proud of what we did here. Yeah. We raised two thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Is that right? Yes. I nailed it. Two thousand one hundred and sixty dollars last year, which is fucking insane. I saw streamers who have way bigger followings than us raise half that yeah. in their charity streams. And I'm, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. But, but if the we Kingdom rate... Hearts community, dude, we make things into competitions that shouldn't be. Exactly. <laughs> Ex- <laughs> so that is so true. We what do. I'm trying Kingdom to say. Kingdom Hearts is a single player game that's somehow multiplayer. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, so what we're trying to say is we know that the Kingdom Hearts community is one of the most Caring, loving, giving communities while also being some of the most toxic people I ever... No, I'm just kidding. No. But you guys are absolutely some of the nicest people I ever met. What I was going to say is, to Jason's point, is (laughs) while it's not a competition, if we raise the most money, we can fucking brag about it, all right? (laughs) (laughs) We can talk about how it's not a competition all day long, but if if we raise the most money... Then we're the best. <laughs> the best. It just it will just keep adding accolades to the beginning of the, right. the intro to the podcast. Exactly. That's what this is all about. You think it's about Kingdom yeah. Hearts? We just want to add more accolades to what we <laughs> what we say at the beginning. Okay. The longest lasting, longest running. Is that all we have right now? Well, yeah. That's the like, right. That's fastest why we... Kingdom Hearts three speed runner on a podcast. We have that. Oh, that's fucking true. That is true. I don't see uh, Swift Shadow shout outs going on a podcast, all right? <laughs> and the moment he does, then we're fucked. I don't, I don't have that title anymore. You got to get to work. Right. I got I to get better. Shit. Anyway, Jason, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to do the question of the week. But before that, I got, I got a little bone to pick with somebody. Oh, my God. I'm not going to tell you who until we come back from the break. So you have to listen through. Sorry. Anyway. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Answer Report podcast. Jason, I have a bone to pick with somebody. Is it me? It's not you. Okay, it's good. I have a bone to pick with whatever person on the Osaka team (laughs) designed the mysterious figure. Oh, no, no, no. So... (laughs) Let me, let, me, let me put a little background on this. Okay, okay. I did not play Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep when it came out. That was during the time when I was kind of a lapsed Kingdom Hearts fan. Like, I didn't play, uh, I didn't play BBS. I didn't play DDD. I, didn't, I certainly didn't play 3.5A or Recoded. Yeah, you didn't play any of the, like, handheld shit. I, I, played, I played Chain of Memories. Chain of Memories is the only one that I played before we started diving back into Kingdom Hearts around 2017 Right, right, right. Right? Um, so I've always heard about mysterious figure and how bullshit he is. I've mm-hmm. heard about it. Right. I've never witnessed it. We've a lot of bullshit bosses in our fucking day. Right. 
because you and I, when we played through it on our YouTube channel, Super Spaghetti Bros, go check it out. Uh, <laughs> we didn't do any of the secret boss in BBS because you were pretty over BBS at yes. the time. And that's understandable. I still think BBS is a pretty good game with some flaws. Um, I love BBS. Right. So when we're doing this trophy hunting for BBS, like we have been doing, and we get to Terra, and we were doing Terra first because we're like, he's the slow man. Let's get him out of the way, right? Yeah. People typically say he's the worst. I've fought Mysterious Figure for probably 15 hours now. Like when you combine it, yeah. When probably. you combine the different streams where I fought him as Terra. And I just we just tried it the first time, and I fought him for a while, and I was like, okay, this sucks, but like, you know how you get like that, like, I got to try again. I got to yeah, try again. Yeah. I got to try again, yep, right? Yep, so I yep, got into yep. it. Every gamer can understand. Right. Dude. Well, just one more level. So that happened. And I was like, I can't beat him. I'm going to come back later. Because we had other trophies to get at that right, point. Right. So then I get more trophies. I level up a little bit. I go, you know what? I'm going to try it again. I come back hours fighting him. And we end the stream. I can't do it. Yeah. So now I'm down about it. So then this last stream... I pretty much finished everything you could do with Terra to get all the trophies. And the one thing left was the mysterious figure. Okay. I'm level 70. I have all the commands. I have all the abilities. I have all the ice cream you could imagine. All the trophies except two. The plat and beating mysterious figure. And oh, three because the adventurer one with Terra. Yeah. Because I don't have the plat yet because I haven't done it with Aqua Invent. So actually, I'm missing two trophies for Terra. For Terra, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm fighting him. And it's just, it, it, didn't get, it didn't get any easier leveling up. I leveled up 20 levels and nothing changed, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely not. So my good friends Preferred Whale 6 and Water KH came in the chat and they said, Hey, Mike, I've read that if you take off certain abilities, he's nicer or he doesn't do certain moves. So I go through and I take off all the character abilities. That uh, I don't use fire boost. I'm not even using it. You know what do I need? Right, that? right, right, right. Uh, 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 cure boost. I don't even have a cure equipped. I'm just using block to heal. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I I'm starting to use the thunder surge strategy, which people kept telling me was a cheese. There's nothing cheesy about that. That's how you have to survive to <laughs> fight this guy. So I have all thunder it's surges. It's a requirement. It's a requirement. He's just bad. He's just. I ended up winning. I ended up persevering. Yes. Against all odds. Against. All odds. there's a very funny clip of me monkey now after I do it, chimpy now, as uh, my good friend Yemi Anity would yes, say. Full chimp. I went full chimp. I literally. No, 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 this is not real. <laughs> Suck it, OJ! Suck it, OJ! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Ripped my headphones and hat off my head and threw them down with the controller. Yes, threw them on the fucking Got ground. up, threw my chair out of the way, run it behind the curtain to my bed and just started pounding on my bed like, like a fucking a ape. Fucking like ape. Like Donkey Kong in his fu when he found out King K rule, took all his fucking bananas, yes. dude. And then I came back. But with we more force. Yes. Yeah, more force. And that's because it was past midnight and I didn't want to scream. I, really, I had to get up that energy kinetically instead of uh, vocally. Yeah. I want to talk about with you a little bit how bullshit that boss is because there are multiple things about him that There's so many layers dude. are just unfair and not fun. Yeah. Um, there is a move in particular that comes to mind. It's uh, it, to me, it reminds me of um, and some secret darkness in KH1. When he dashes forward, dashes back, dashes forward, and then he pauses and then dashes again. Yeah. And it's supposed to throw you off your block timing, right? But this one is way faster, but it's the same looking kind of movement. Mm -hmm. It's way faster. And so you block the first set and you're like, cool. The problem is he's already behind you. And when you block, you have no protection behind you, which realistic. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then how am I supposed to combat that? And then, so you get hit by the next one, 
the second the second wave. He goes, he does it like four or six times, something like that. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, real fast. Eventually, he pops you up in the air. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. that is death because you cannot block in the air in this game. No, there's no aerial block. No, um, at least for Terra. I, I don't know about the other characters. So you die, right? Or you get down to one HP, and then you got to wait for floaty ass Terra <laughs> with his giant buns to float <laughs> to the ground and hope he doesn't hit you on the way down. Yeah, you're pretty much like not like eh. if he had 10 moves that he could do, nine of them will kill you right there. Right, exactly. So that that's probably my least favorite movie does. My second least favorite movie does it, are the lasers. And so these are similar lasers to what Ansem again, Ansem Secret Darkness. It's weird that he has a lot of those style moves like in, in three Ansem Secret Darkness uses these and there's these balls and they shoot lasers. But the problem is they are like. You can block them, but the timing is different every time. Yeah. Because I honestly think that it's based on what your active frames are. And like, it literally will wait. Like if you're blocking, it will wait until the block is literally just done and then it will shoot. I agree. I think that's exactly what it is. It's some Mortal Kombat 2 ass AI where it knows your input before you do it. Yeah. And it's, or as you do it. And it's such BS. Like there were times where it's like, oh, I got lasers. I just die. Like there was nothing I could do. Yeah. If you were one HP and lasers came... I think I, I could count on one hand the number of times where you were one HP and ended up living yeah. during lasers. And I fought him hundreds of times. Yes, literally. Then the worst part about this fight happens. Yes. You get him down. You know, you got You got a strategy down with your thunder surge. You're dashing in him. You're kind of you're kind of veering off to the right or left of him. So the thunder hits him a lot and stuns him. Yes, because you can get him in a stun loop if you do it right. Right. If he if if he's nice RNG wise and gives you the right moves. You can just kind of stun him, and he, you can interrupt most moves he does. Most, yeah. Um, by doing this, and so you, I've had I had quite a few runs where I got him down to two or less health bars. He turns invisible. Okay. Oh, invisible. Whatever. You just you just you just just lock on. Just him. lock on. You can't lock on to him. And we're talking BBS camera, right? In a small arena. Yes. So you cannot lock on to him. And any guide, a guide that OJ pulled up for me said, just do a quick 180 and face him. <laughs> How am I supposed to do that? The lock on doesn't work. And it's not like Ocarina time where I hit the Z button and it faces where Tara's facing. Yeah. Like the camera doesn't work that way. No. So what do I do? And then he starts doing moves that you can't like. You can see his blades and you can see what kind of ashes, but he starts doing moves that are unrecognizable because he didn't do them when he was visible. Yeah. Like this giant comet that just comes from the sky <laughs> or like the lasers are different. And so doom, doom. literally well, he, just doom. He does doom. He does doom when you're, uh, when he's visible. Mm. I was told. It must have been when I wasn't watching. Water told me that the reason he was doing doom was because I had ice slide on. So I turned that off and then he, he was doing doom a lot. It was oh. before you got home and I turned the ice slide off and went just regular air slide. And he did it like once after that. So huh. I think there's something to that. There's something to like based on how many abilities you have. It right. will actually or make like it harder. What abilities, I guess. Huh? Um, so I guess that's kind of cool. I don't know. Like that's a cool yeah. idea, but it executed poorly. Ex yeah. 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 And the thing is like the character is cool as shit, right? The yeah. stuff he does is fucking cool. Yeah. Right. But to, to design a boss in a video game where the primary thing you do is hit the X button to hit something, and doing that is not something you should do, at that's all. just bad. At all. He doesn't get stunned by normal combat at and all. And then when you do it, he freezes you in time. Yeah. I wanted to rant about this because I know I've ranted about it a lot on stream, but I just want to throw my hat in the ring of, yes, Mysterious Figure's terrible. Why did they do this? Oh God! To me, there's two things that really true. Like, normally, like if we're fighting a boss or whatever, and one of us can't do it, the other will try. You know what I mean? Like, just to like give him a break. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a mental thing. Like, Jason uh, didn't offer dude, one time. It, it's like, it's like, oh my God, Goku's hurt, dude. He, we gotta get him senzu beans, but they're not here, dude. Don't worry, Vegeta's got you. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna buy time, dude. Dude, hey sidebar but he worked napa dude yeah he dude that that's my boy yeah because he like everybody else like yamcha fucking yamcha cybermen just, and <laughs> chaozu tries to explode himself 
Yeah. It has worked. Child suit. Jen, real, he just starts. I'm sorry, Jen. He just starts triangle beaming Nappa, dude, and keeps him down for a good, dude. He gives it his all, dude. Yeah, it's actually poggers. It is very poggers. Dragon Ball Z. Anyway. Anyway, I'm fucking like, okay. Normally, I'd be like, okay, dude. I'll fucking, I'll fight him off, dude. You, you, because sometimes watching the fight, you're able to see things that, like, it's not as clear right, you when you're you actually doing it. You right? don't have tunnel vision. Yeah. And so you're able to kind of come up with some things, right? I didn't fucking offer, dude, for two reasons. Two fucking reasons. One, it's just coded poorly. Just straight up. There will be times when you fucking interrupt him. Like, for example, there's the fucking fire tornado move. And he summons tornadoes around him. And he pretty much just, like, kind of runs at you. Like, dashes at you, right? Mm -hmm. And the fire hits you. Makes sense, right? Yeah. There was literally a time where he summoned the fucking fire tornadoes. And Mike hit him as he was doing it. Yep. Did the tornadoes go away like they had 99 other fucking times? No. No. The f they kept going. Now you might be like, oh, well, he just missed the, the fucking window. No. He didn't keep doing the fire tornado move. He started doing other moves while the fire tornado hitbox was around him. It's just fucking coded poorly, dude. It yep. just is fucking... It, you just get fucked randomly. Or yep. like a tornado that's on the other side of the fucking arena will hit you. Quite literally. Yep. And number two is if you do too much damage to him, he will heal for like a majority of the damage that you did to him. Yep. Because he, he also he has heal this, block. He puts up this heal block that it's like this. That's not every time he blocks. It's just when he has this like orange shield around him. Yeah. So when I beat him, what I did is I, I got him down. He didn't turn invisible right away. I got him down to about one health bar before he turned invisible. And then I had the rhythm mixer finisher, right? Mm -hmm. And it, the, the clips on our discord, if you want to see it, but the rhythm mixer finisher has the square triangle and circle and whatever one's highlighted will go like a right it does it'll, a lot of damage and does a lot of damage it's like this bop, 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 bop. i got him down to like this much and then he started blocking and so it healed him the whole health bar again like i got the health bar down to this oh much my god. and it healed him and i was like oh my fucking god and then i hit him one more time and he didn't block and then the health bar like it had like maybe an eighth left and i hit him with two lightning surge or thunder surges and that's what killed him but it almost like if he would have blocked again, I would have been fucked because he would have yeah. just healed his health bar again. Yeah. And so it's shot locks so, are useless. Yeah. Cause you use your shot lock. I remember one time Mike was using the shot lock as iframes against the laser move. And he had him at like two health bars ish, right? right? Like two and a half. He went all the way to full health from there. Yep. Because he decided to shot lock just for the iframes, not even for the damage. Right. I just wanted to avoid the lasers. And I was like, Oh, Start over. <laughs> anyway, fighting the mysterious figure has given me a little more context for when people try to clown on Osaka team. However, what I will say is they have come a long way because Yozora, to me, is literally the exact opposite of the mysterious figure. Oh, yeah. Nothing feels unfair. Everything... You, you can combat whatever he does, no matter what's going on. If mm. you pay attention, if you learn the patterns, yeah, it's yeah. not random. It doesn't sometimes work. It works if you do it right. Oh yeah. And so even, even I'd like to point out, even in BBS, there's the, uh, no heart. No heart cool no is cool too. Yeah. No heart's super cool. And it doesn't feel like nearly as unfair. Like right. there's two moves that are like, yo, you're pretty much dead if you get hit by these. Right. right? But they're extremely telegraphed. You have a lot of time to get the fuck out or to like shot lock for some iframes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're playing like like Ven Aqua, you can literally just spam square because you get like 100% iframe. Right. But when you're playing Terra, you're just fucked. Right. But anyway, that boss is good too in the same game. Yep. Now, that boss isn't perfect. And I don't know if Jozor is perfect, but he's literally... Like if you took someone that critiqued Mysterious Figure... And then you know how people do those YouTube videos? This is how I would have done Mysterious yeah. Figure, right? <laughs> this is how I would have done it. This is what they would shoot for is Yozora. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it's just so much, so much more polished, so much better, so much cooler. I mean, not cool. I mean, Mysterious Figure is cool. Yeah, like, he has cool. cool things. Honestly, 
he's like the more coolest, young Xehanort. He's the coolest version of young Xehanort. Yeah, for sure. For he's sure. Fucking, he's fucking diesel. Yep. He does badass shit, mm-hmm. and he's not constantly saying this fucking snarky-ass bullshit, dude. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about it. I just wanted to rant about it for a little yeah. bit, and yeah. uh, let, people, let people know I now understand the pain of the mysterious figure. Now, Jason, it's time for the question of the week this week's question of the week <clears throat> is uh from our friend covenant creamer and it's a wild one it's actually a double question of the week if we're being honest first question which cage character would you give the best worst rela- would give the best worst re- relationship advice and why and two which cage character is the most likely to walk up to a girl and say is this guy bothering you i.e which character exudes the most white knight energy and i said answer one answer both the choice is yours oh my god which is that's a legend of the hidden temple reference and they're redoing that show but with adults what so i think we should probably try out for it We got to be the Silver Snakes, dude. Dude, Silver Snakes were always badass, yeah. dude. Yeah. If Silver Snakes fucked up, dude, in the like the the very beginning, you'd be like absolutely trash, dude. Like you're fucking, you're besmirching yeah. the Silver Snakes' you, name. Do you know what team was the worst though? The Orange Iguanas, dude. Yeah, they never fucking won. Never. Dude. Not They're the once. Detroit Lions of Legends of the Hidden <laughs> Temple, dude. They're fucking terrible. <laughs> I'd be sitting there like, come on, Orange Iguanas, on. one time, please. Come on, come on, next. Purple Parrots. Next season. You lost to the Purple Parrots. <laughs> dude, Purple Parrots were kind of sauce, though, dude. Yeah, sometimes. They're kind of Blue just, Barracudas, though. More just like dripped, honestly. Yeah, they looked good. They would never yeah. win, though, either. No. Blue Barracudas, fire. Those are, those are, those are up. Red there, Monkeys. Dude. Red Monkeys were actually kind of like. They would win most of the time. Yeah, they were. They, were <laughs> they would win most of the time. The Red Monkeys. I don't yeah, know why. It's true. They're, they're, they're like, the New I, England Patriots. They're good. They're good. What could I say? They would just fucking win. Yeah, I don't love them. But God damn it, I respect them. I respect the, I respect hell the, out the of red them. monkeys. <laughs> I just don't understand, like, watch it. I, <laughs> you're watching that game. You're watching these kids play this game, and they're trying to put the fucking idol together, and they can't figure they it out. They cannot. Why can't y'all just fucking put... It's a monkey the, sitting on a throne. Just put it in there, dude. Dude, I swear to God. They must, like, fucking put some fucking, like, sleeping gas, like, right there, dude. Yeah. To, like, like just enough to addle your brain. <laughs> the kids. Just enough to, like, addle your brain, dude, where you're, like, <sighs> and, like, they're breathing really hard. They're, like, really nervous. They're fucking sucking that fucking sleeping gas in, dude. Because there's no other, w- there's yeah, no there's other There's no way you're that bad. And then what always freaked me out about that show, too, is when you, like, accidentally hit the wrong button, and then the fucking tribal dudes come out, and they just yeah. grab these kids, dude. I'm yeah. like, don't fucking touch me. Dude, the tribal dudes. I don't fucking dudes, agree to this. The tribal dudes are nightmare fuel, dude. And we never saw those kids ever again. They were dead. Yeah. I'm just kidding. They come out at the end to win or lose, but. They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if I started, like, an urban legend that, I was like. On a show. Like, <laughs> they killed the kids that got caught. That'd be awesome. Anyway, the question of the week. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Uh, Kafona answers question number two. Shout out to Kafona. Says, the guy bothering the girl, Zigbar, the guy who asks, you cannot tell me that Lorium wouldn't be a white knight. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Lorium I could would. see it. Angel says, for question number one, Vanitas, because this, and it's a tweet, and it says, Vanitas, love is cool, but have you ever stood in your kitchen shoveling shredded cheese into your mouth straight from the bag like a goblin who escaped after being held captive underground for 47 years and broken in a store that specifically only sells bags of shredded cheese? Oh. Wow. And number two. I wasn't two, ready for that. <laughs> number two, Demix. But not because he's a white knight, he's just chaotic. I could have sworn there was a Heart Hotel tweet literally about one of them asking Vanitas for relationship advice, but I don't have time to find it. Okay, fair enough. So maybe that was the tweet Angel wanted, and I read the one that was just about shoving shredded cheese in your mouth. I can literally, like, hear Demix saying, is this guy bothering you? Like, (laughs) he's, like, strumming his guitar. Tuning it, not strumming it. (laughs) Phil Games says, the Master of Masters would absolutely give the worst relationship advice. He'd just be all like, may your heart be your guiding key. (laughs) But then their hearts would want completely different things and it would be a huge mess. Yeah. Oh, wait, I forgot we were talking about relationship advice for a second. I was just describing the entire plot of Bat Cover. True. That, was not, that wasn't a bad Ray Chase. 
Yeah. I'm giving myself some credit there. Yeah, that dude, wasn't that, a bad Ray that Chase. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Not bad. <laughs> uh, Billy the Kid Lawrence says, That's Mickey bad. would give the worst advice because he's clear, he clearly is out there. Leaving his wife to take care of King shit back home while he's out looking for some side mouse while ending up with some blue haired piece. Then he ultimately doesn't even care about either, given that he lets her ass potentially rot out in what amounts to essentially hell while having the absolute gall to claim it was her choice that he was respecting. When in the end, this evil bitch of a rodent did it on purpose so he could stay hoeing himself out there in more worlds because he truly doesn't give a damn about that tall drink of Aquafina, mommy, <laughs> nor his own <laughs> wife, whom he continues to periodically return home to and probably treat like utter garbage. Never give that mouse an ounce of your time. If you give a mouse a cookie, he'll ask for your life and he'll take it without remorse. <laughs> Best advice would come from Goofy, because at least in Disney canon, he's a dad, and dads are so wise about that stuff. You look at Goofy being a father, and you respect him, because you say, you know, he's yucked at least once. That's commendable. That's true. That's true. And then for question two, Billy the Kid Lawrence says, uh, Rye and Beat would definitely be the most white knight, you know? All up in the girl's business, like, is this guy bothering you, yo? When in reality, the other one's bothering her, you know? They'd be like, have another drink and vent to us, yo. We'll always be there to support you, you know? She'd cry and take another swig of her drink while the two white knights just stare at each other creepily, you know? It's just sick, yo. <laughs> do they do that too? Um, Beat does. Beat does the yo, and okay. Rai does the you know? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alex says two? One, best person would probably be Kyrie. She's friends with Selfie, who's all about the romantic papu fruit stuff and probably helped her practice sharing fruits with Sora. She'd tell you Hold just up. to follow your heart and make the move. Arr! What is what is practicing? Flag fruits? on the play. Flag on the play. What the fuck was that? <laughs> She's friends with Selfie, who's all about the romantic papu fruit stuff and probably helped her practice sharing fruits with Sora. Okay, okay, I get it now. I get it now. Like how they do like the like like the like but what if, people do with with like wedding cake at the wedding. But if they right? practiced, wouldn't they be connected then? They, they would spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be connected to you forever. <laughs> yeah, it, they clearly spit it out because selfie who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worst person would be Axel because he probably wouldn't care. LOL. If you ever try to talk to him about relationship stuff, he'd probably be like, "You'd rather simp over someone than spend time with the boys? Come on, dude." True. Giga Chad, White Knight energy, motherfucking Zemnis. When he approaches the cuck, he'd be like, "Ah." Oh. It seems you are special, too. <laughs> then when he asks for this weird, tall-ass motherfucker's name, Zemnis will simply say, I am but a mere shell. Then when the shithead tries to bail, he'd grab him by the back of his shirt or whatever and say, Leave him? <laughs> and do some laser shit or something to scare him off. Then he'd say, What a shame. And here I thought we could be friends. Doesn't get any more Chad-like than that. Thank you, Elks. <laughs> uh. I, hey. Is this guy bothering you? Anytime you guys can <laughs> let me do my Zen this voice in the question of the week, dude, I'm fucking taking it. All right. Uh, Tanil says, worst, Vanitas. Little shit gremlin is trying to ruin your relationship. Why would you even ask him? You should know better. Best. Gotta agree with Goofy. Goofy is the wisest sage, wisest sage in KH, and you can't tell me any different. Question number two. Tara. Himbo drinks respect women juice and is ready to have your back <laughs> even if he doesn't understand what's wrong. True. <laughs> he does drink respect women juice. Uh, he makes it himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's my special recipe. It's got three different kinds of punch in it. Uh, Bamboo says, best, probably goofy because he doesn't overthink things ever. He would give a good and straight answer without even realizing just how good his advice is. Probably saying some of the smartest and most thoughtful shit you'll ever hear following, following up by saying, well, maybe you should ask someone who knows a more about this stuff. No, Goofy, you're doing great, and we all love you. True. Worst, Axel, but not Lee, but Axel. He's too awkward to even bring up the idea of love of any kind. If someone were to come to him asking for relationship advice, he'd probably just explode from stress or embarrassment or the existential dread of not having a heart. True. Number two, Sora, because it's Sora. He helps everyone he lays eyes on. He'd be less calm and collected about the situation, though. He'd probably yell, hey, that's not very nice. When Donald screeches in the background and in the end just beat whoever's being a bother over the head with his keyblade. <laughs> I feel like, is, is there a part in the game where Sora says, like, is this guy bothering you? <laughs> like, I, I feel like it's in the game. I don't know why. 
I'm trying to think what it would be. Like I, I don't know. I just feel like I just feel like I've heard that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It sounds <laughs> it sounds right. Uh, Sunny Novus says, you know, Axel will give both the best and worst relationship advice. It'll be so bad it's good. And then for two, Lorium. I was originally going to say Brain because it's illegal to wear a fedora and not be a white knight, but I think Lorium just barely takes the cake. True. Mm. True. Broomdock says, I feel like Tifa would give good relationship advice. I'd also want to trust Goofy, but he's estranged from his son, so I don't know if you can trust what he says. I feel like Axel openly admits to giving terrible advice, but continues to do it nonetheless, much to everyone's puzzlement. I feel like Sora would interject unnecessarily, not because he's a white knight, but because he has no, absolutely no boundaries, and as much as I love him, in the real world, people would hate him for that. If it were actually a bad situation, though, I'd want Riku there. I feel like he's the guy at the house party that coolly diffuses potentially red flag situations with tact and grace. The guy starting trouble is probably Vanitas. Now I'm thinking about a Kingdom Hearts college house party, and I find it extremely funny. <laughs> Original Dreamer 06 says, The cage character that would get the best relationship advice, friendship-wise, Sora, no question, and the reason should be painfully obvious. Romantic-wise, either Aqua or Isa is your best bet. Isa will tell you what bullshit you have a give you better stuff, while Aqua will tell you that maybe your idea slash plan slash whatever else is good, but here's how to make it better, you know? Worst advice, friendship-wise, any kind of Xehanort, young, old, don't matter, and the reason should be painfully obvious. Romantic-wise, Lee and Sora. God. I can just imagine you going up to Lee like, bro, I need some advice. And Lee being Lee, he would straight up be like, all right, well, step one, flirt. And then do that terrible flirting shit. And step two, here's where it gets spicy. You're going for the kill. You got to fuck him. Like, <laughs> like, am I wrong? Sora Flirt into fucking. All right, dude. True combo. Let's go. <laughs> Sora would be pretty bad at this because he's an airhead. Which cage character has the most white knight energy? Okay. Riku, Lee, Sora, Aqua. Fight me on this, but Riku's got that overprotective vibe to him. Yeah, Lee he kind of does now. Lee can joke and shit, but someone pulling bullshit to his friends, he's like, all right, I'm going to throw some fists. Sora <laughs> because he's Sora, and Aqua because we all know Aqua's the only mature adult here, minus Isa, and she would totally pull out her mama bear instincts and be fully, be fully okay and prepared to beat a man that was bothering one of her children. I mean, friends, LOL. Sorry if this was too long. Not at all, original dreamer. Thank you. Uh, Shug says, Axel for all three. Hell yeah, dude. Love that. Hell yeah. SB Cat says, The character that would get the best advice would be Shion. She just seems like she would listen to everything you're asking, take a minute, and tell you what you already knew, but true. from a different perspective. True, 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 true. Worse would be Zigbar. I bet he gets all the ladies, but it's based on pure sex appeal and nothing <laughs> he's doing besides saying, Let's make it interesting with a wink. <laughs> so he would tell you just to ignore a girl to get them to notice you. As far as White Ninja goes, I'm kind of feeling Sora. He wouldn't intentionally do it, but I can see him going, is this skis ball bothering you? I've dealt like with people like him before or something, and then making <laughs> sure they're okay and you have some sort of connection now or something and you'd fight for their heart. He also would expect the smallest crumb of coochie. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> DP Grant says, best cipher, he's the head of the Twilight Town Disciplinary Committee. Therefore, he's <laughs> one you should turn to when your partner is stepping out of line. And he's got Fu and Olette at beck and call, so he knows a thing or two. Is Cypher Olette a, a ship? Wait. He says o Olette? Fujin and Olette. Cypher. You know, they're all in Twilight Town together. What? I don't think they met Olette. <laughs> they definitely met Olette. He meant that they're both ladies. He has his beck and call. He's oh. implying there's a relationship. Dude, I, I, I was when, when you, you said thought, that. You thought I meant Raijin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I thought there was just like this like bisexual love triangle, dude. dude. I, I, I was there for it, dude. dude. I was like, wait, it is. I can, I can see it, dude. It is. I can see it. Worst, Sora. It would be hard to tell if the advice he gives you is meant for your romantic partner or for platonic best friend. And there's also a problem that if you ask someone to ask Sora on your behalf, they might tweak or alter his advice to suit their agenda. True white knights cannot stand the term, and who is the only person we know who denied being a knight? Riku. Yikes, that scene is very cringe. Chad KH1, Riku, please come back to me. <laughs> Dude, he's a he's fucking he's 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 still Chad mode in two and three. Thank you very much, dude. Let me give you fucking cage three Chad mode, dude. Everyone just fucking died in front of them. And Riku's like, 
I gotta protect Sora. And stabs a fucking tornado of it's darkness. True. It's true. Until his dying breath. It's true. Twice. Get Roxel says, worst Riku. The guy's as dense as a brick. <laughs> Best. Not sure, to be honest, even though fans love the ship cage characters, the characters are just terrible at it. Two. Roxas. He's got energy like Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Nobody calls me Chicken Little. <laughs> Meteor Phoenix says, best Pete, have you seen his wife <laughs> with Pete? Of all people, <laughs> dude's got to know things. Worst, Peter Pan. Oh, He'd Jesus. probably recommend you kidnap them or Jesus something. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Number two. Oh, no, no, no. Hercules, 100%. I think he literally says that to the centaur in the movie. Is this guy bothering you? Is this guy bothering you? <laughs> Energy Scott, I'm going to answer question one with the worst person to get relationship advice from. Riku, hear me out. You're feeling a bit conflicted about a girl slash guy you like, and Riku is a proper bro and brings you pizza to chat about said issues. Next okay, thing you know, okay. he's saying, whoever eats the most pizza gets to be with your girl. Like, dude, I thought what we had an understanding. Fuck? Plus, she isn't allowed to make her own choices. Back off, bro. If she turns into a heartless and gets a nobody hit on her. No, I'm not going to race you across... A Selene for her. A Selene? Maybe that's supposed to be Island. Autocorrect? Oh, probably. Leave me be. Turn to darkness or whatever. Question two on a shorter note. Goof, he always speaks up. True. Goofy's a popular answer for this. He's uh, just the boy. Gorilla54 says, best advice is coming from the Goofster. He's Hell the yeah. only one with a kid, so we know at least he's been in a relationship of some kind before. And if there's one brain cell... In Sora Donald Goofy, he got it. He abbreviated it. So <laughs> Worst has got to be Michael Mouse. I'm not taking advice from a guy who left his friend in the darkness for 10 years and then just fucks off and leaves his wife alone while the world ends. Then Maleficent invades his kingdom and he still doesn't come home. Deciding to just, just say fuck it and send Sora. Two, Ma Sora has major white knight energy. I can only picture him seeing a couple mid-argument and jump in between them saying something like, leave her alone, even though it's not that serious and frankly none of his business. Hmm. Covenant Creamer says, all right, might as well answer my own question. Best advice is going to go to Ven. No strong reasoning here. He just seems friendly. Worst advice is definitely Mickey. He'd probably suggest you abandon them in hell for 10 years. <laughs> Two, I could see Ventus giving some good advice, dude. Meanwhile, I, I hate Ventus typically. I got to give I, I gotta give respect where respect is due. I think, I think a lot of people would appreciate that, Jason. Two, I'm going to pick one hero and one villain for the White Knight role. Like Gorilla said, I think Sora would have good intentions, but still stick his nose in too many situations he shouldn't. As far as villains, I'm going Demix. Feels like he'd have a major nice guy complex. True. Also, I got my question of the week picked without saying it was a kind of weird one. Clearly, the system is broken. <laughs> it's a glitch. It's just a glitch. Okay. Hey, 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 dude. Also, why are you not asking weird questions? I think this one was kind of a weird one. I think it was mislabeled. Wait, it was a... It was like, yo, you already know this is kind of a right. weird. I one, think, dude. I think, I think, I think the algorithm still worked. <laughs> uh, Karrison Ford says, "Best Enzo." I think having a logical thinker who's able to give sound advice that isn't based on emotion is important. And in real life, I definitely go to someone like him who thinks differently to me and to get another point of view. Worst, Vanitas, he'll totally tell you that your crush is bullying you if it means they like you. Man, I really don't want to say Sora, so I'll have to go with Demix. He just seems like a dude who would simp hard on Twitch. Yeah. Demix is a tier three simp. And mm -hmm. he's a mod. And he just bans people. Hey, I, he just bans people coming into the chat saying, in a hot how do you stream? jump? He, no, he's in a hot tub stream. And he's like, hey, can you let's make that water dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I wish I was that water. <laughs> Chip Cooper, the world ends with you super fan, says... I would go to Goofy for any kind of advice, not just relationship. That dude's got life figured out. Riku post KH1 would White Knight. KH1 Riku would be the one bothering the girl. Yeah, agreed. agreed. I can I can see a meme where Riku Replica is bothering Namine, and Riku's like, hey, is this guy bothering you? <laughs> uh, Pokemon Trainer J says, Brain is the character in Kingdom Hearts who... Brain is the character in Kingdom Hearts who is canonically fucked, so I'll get advice from him. <laughs> I realize Goofy too, but Max isn't in Kingdom Hearts, so who knows if it's even happened yet for Goofy. <laughs> Two, Riku. 
Doesn't think he's being a white knight, but does it because of a time when someone did it to him when Ants of Secret Darkness was getting too flirtatious about getting himself back inside Riku. That what? one, that one took a turn. <laughs> uh, Kyrie's bro will huck you up, says, my answer for both is Aqua. Aqua would listen to you and give open-minded advice about relationships, kind of like an older sister. Aqua and BBS was the literal white knight saving the princess and clapping cheeks. It's canon, I swear. Yeah, that is canon. That is canon. Um, Yonag, who uh, put their name as Ganaway. <laughs> In parentheses. Because I said, I said it backwards last week. <laughs> Worst advice would for sure come from Jiminy Cricket, because as we all know, yes, yes. he is a pedophile. Yes, dude. Oh, my God. I was waiting for somebody to say this the whole time. It's, a, it's right there. It is. it is right there. Kyrie smoking at Grandma says... Marluxia would give the worst relationship advice. His advice would only work for super sexy, confident dudes like him. It would make you look like a jerk. Probably <laughs> some real be mean to the babes. They don't like nice guys energy. <laughs> Two, Sora, only because he's so overprotective of everyone he sees and gets involved in everyone's business. True. The hugest of Janus's says, <laughs> Goofy would give the best advice. His ability to cut through the bullshit while being mindful of your feelings would be unmatched. Worst advice, White Knight is definitely Sora. It's not that his vice wouldn't be helpful. It's just that the typical standard of decency is astronomically higher than the average man. It's not just realistically attainable for you or I. He do be simping, though. He do be. He do be do be do. Okay, so fucking Wrath of Rebellion wrote a fucking book I here. I, I saw the link. Because I, I always go through all the channels because it's like... Right. Whenever I see that there's something new in a channel, I go look at it, right? And I, I normally, for question of the week, just press it and then scroll all the way down. Yep. Right? Like, I know I can just press mute or put on red, but I don't fucking... I, right. I'm I'm an absolute two-head. Anyway, I saw the length and was like, holy shit. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> Personally, I believe that relationship advice can be important given the circumstances. If you and your spouse are happy in the relationship, why need some? It doesn't mean the advice is useless, but why change the formula in the relationship if everything is working out? Also, you could always have friends that aren't in a good relationship that give you advice that would do the opposite effect on your relationship that you would have hoped for. Well, I went into some research on this question of the week, and I found some interesting information. For example, uh, yes. if you were to go up to Sora, I don't think they would have enough romantic relationship experience to give advice for it to be beneficial for your own relationship. I could just see Zach in like a fucking lab coat yeah. right now. <laughs> It's like the ninja sex party one where Danny's in a yeah. lab coat with a thing and it just says boner on it. Uh, this doesn't mean that he's the worst at giving advice. This just means that he's not experienced enough to give you concrete tips on how to improve your relationship. <laughs> you wouldn't go up to Pete and ask him for fashion advice, would you? Of course not. You'd be giving you. Uh, he'd be unforgiving yourself if you ever took his advice because you'd cry every time you caught your nuts or cooch while zipping up your pants. True. Back to the topic at hand, I researched lots of different Kingdom Hearts characters, each with their own different upbringings and relationship experiences. I found that the best character to give relationship advice would be the Moogle. <laughs> God damn, I couldn't even read that sentence. The fucking Moogle. Think about it. They're always there where and whenever you need them. Their beautiful peach fuzz skin glows as you look them in the eyes. They're always happy to see you and vice versa. They're always fair, calm, cool, and collected. Also, they sing this majestic song to you every time you walk up to them and talk with them. I also find that they would have amazing kink tips because, come on, guys. What do you think happens when you pull that ball on top of their heads? Think about it. I just feel like the Moogle is a lover at heart and would give the best relationship advice. Although it was touching to see what the Moogle would do for their friends and lover, we have to go to the worst character to ask for relationship advice from. Researching for years, or in this case, a long week. <laughs> I found the worst character to ask for relationship advice from, and that character is Travis from Travis Town. Mm, now I know yeah. Jiminy is the worst fucking character ever. True. I feel like we hate him so much that he's unfortunately become... He's a, I feel like we hate him so much because he's unfortunately the Chad Frat 
pimp to female crickets. I'm sorry, Mike and Jason, but I've reached out to dozens of female crickets, and this is what I gathered from no. what they've said to me. No. I was so upset when they told me this info that I would cry and intentionally stomp <laughs> no. the fuck out of the crickets I interviewed. By the way, I'm getting sued by the victim's family, so if you could send me some cash, that would be appreciated. Jiminy is sadly the reason that there are so many crickets. I'll just say it like this. He just fucks a lot. <laughs> so you can sorrowfully ask him for the best sex advice that would want to make any oh mate stay. <sighs> well, anyways, Travis, <laughs> the scum on my shoes and the cum on my boots. I mean we all hate this fucking guy. He stares from across the room with a bizarre grin on his face. Yeah. He's the type of guy where yeah. even if I haven't talked to him, I'd question everything if I saw him staring at me. Yeah. Like, imagine that you're at the Travis Town Cash Bash and you got a drink all by yourself. You're drinking it having a good time, and bam, you look up and see Travis frozen with a shitting grin staring oh, at you from no, across the no, room. No, no, he's not even blinking. I'd look down at my drink and be scared that he put something in my drink, and I'd run home. <laughs> Travis is that guy, the Bill Cosby of the Kingdom Hearts universe. Jesus Negative Christ. infinity out of ten. Never come into contact with the guy, even if you're a guy or a girl. He yeah. would come for all the wrong reasons, pedo tier. I also looked into the White Knight question, too. It's also Travis. He just wants to get in your pants. Sad world we live in. Ooh woo. <laughs> Ooh woo indeed. <laughs> the rest of this is just reactions to what Zach said. Okay. So Elk said, oh my fucking God. <laughs> Sean said, I what? <laughs> Zach replied, sorry guys, someone had to say it. True. I don't think that's true, but uh it is true. <laughs> Jip said he wrote enough answers for both him and me. Consider this my answer, giving Mike a break from reading that. <laughs> SB Cat said, looks like OJ passed the reins on long answers. <laughs> and then Meteor Phoenix said, Mike and Jason, can you read this in the voice of Goofy the whole time? Thank you. And I declined. No, I will not do that. <laughs> Absolutely not. So that's it for the question of the week this week. Um, we uh, we got to come up with one for next week. For the during the charity live stream. Wow. Just not even asking your own brother. Dude, I couldn't I can't comprehend me. after that Zach one, dude. Just not even asking. All right, me. answer the question. Okay. When we're talking best relationship advice, dude, I gotta start with who's gonna give the fucking worst fucking advice possible. Mm-hmm. Now, you're gonna you're you're gonna think that I'm gonna say fucking the 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 fucking three we keep fucking hearing, right? Like Vanitas, Axel, Zigbar, right? Goofy. Oh wait, Goofy's on the good We're side. We're talking about the worst. You know who it actually fucking is, dude? Chicken Little. This dude is the biggest fucking idiot I have ever seen. Now, he's fucking poggers in cage two, but when it comes to relationship advice, he's going to tell you that he's, the fucking sky is falling. Well, he's pretty damaged. His dad's a cock. And a cuck. He, he's also a cock-a-doodle dude, you know? <laughs> okay, now, all right, all right. What I'm about to say is very brave, and I'm going to fear for my fucking life after this, dude. The best advice... I'm just going to give you the best fucking advice to get a guy or girl, dude. Mickey Mouse. What? Now, exactly. That's, that's what everyone just verbally said all at once across the world. They said, what? Now, let me tell you. How did Mickey Mouse become a king? He married into that shit. That's true. He was just a fucking boat driver and not he wasn't even, even he a wasn't good even, one. He wasn't even the boat driver. He's just fucking lazy. Yeah, he didn't even actually, he wasn't even supposed to even drive the boat. He's just a lazy piece of shit. And quite frankly, a hoodlum. But now he's the fucking king of his fucking entire world. And just gets to leave with none of the responsibilities. He gets all of the pluses and none of the minuses. Mm. Minnie. Minnie a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Manny Thick, though. It's like, okay, you're the king, dude. Here's a fucking keyblade, dude. So like he went from being an absolute fucking rat to King Michael Mouse, dude. He is going to tell you what you need to do. I want you to know, during this whole speech of yours, you know, Jason and I listen to Kingdom Hearts music when we when we do the podcast, and right now Roxas' theme is playing. <laughs> and I was just like, you were like going on and on about Mickey Mouse being having a Keyblade, and I was just staring forward. <laughs> and I was like... Eyes glazed over. Eyes glazed over, like... <laughs> Maybe I've made some a wrong turn somewhere <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Maybe I zigged when I should have zagged. True. Zag bar. <laughs> should have zag bar. Should have zag bar. Okay, dude. What? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you gotta finish. Let me finish this. Who's the fucking biggest white knight, dude? Fucking Enzo, dude. Enzo in fucking spe- specifically. Yenzo and Cage 3 and, and Melody of Memory, dude. Absolute white knight energy, dude. He got the nice guy energy. He's got the white got the white knight energy, dude. Mm-hmm. And absolute cuck energy, dude. Not Chad, like, respect women, dude. Like, I am only doing this so that you can give me a crow. <laughs> But the I, I would argue that Zexian is the opposite of that. Yeah. Zexian, Zexian is a fucking Zexian's Chad. Zexian's like the dude, you're, you're like at Warp Tour. Yeah. And like he comes out on stage and is like, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Like maybe fingerless sticks, gloves. Fingerless gloves. And he sticks his tongue out like, oh, blah, blah, blah. and it's all pierced. the women <laughs> and men want to have sex with him. Yes. That's Zexian. But Ienzo, you're right. He's, He's a, got 80 big titty goth girlfriends, dude. Yeah, he does. But yeah, Ienzo, absolute cock white yeah. knight in the worst way. All right, so here's <laughs> here's my answer. Worst advice and white knight. Okay, okay. Pence. Wait. Oh, my God, he is. Pence. Because Pence... Oh, my God. So, okay, all right. Despite someone shipping Olette with Cypher, it's Hayner and Olette, oh, right? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. And who's there in the middle? Pence sabotaging it the whole the time. whole time. She's like, "Hey, Pence, um, I gotta talk to you about something." He's like, "Hey, Olette, what's going on?" And she's like, "Um, you know, I think I really like Hainer, but like, we're really good friends, so like, I don't want to. Re- what should I do?" And Pence is like, "You know, there's part of him that's like, yeah, I should just tell her to go for it." But then he goes, "Wait, if Hainer gets with Olette, then I cannot." Yeah, and that's he true. says, that's true. "You know, you guys have a really good friendship, and I think maybe you should just like maybe hang out with somebody who's less like I don't know, blonde. Like you maybe you should hang out with someone with darker hair. <laughs> you know, like maybe you should like maybe you should hang out with like someone who really likes Dog Street and sleuthing." Yeah, true. true, true, true. And she's like, "Yeah," and she doesn't get it. She's like, "I don't know. Hayner's pretty cool, but <laughs> you're right. I don't want to ruin our friendship." And then Hayner comes in, and it's just him and Pence, and he's like, "Yo, bro, you think you think you think Olette likes me?" And he's like, "Nah, dude. Not she so told much. me the other day that she fucking hates you, bro. <laughs> she told me the other day that never in a million years <laughs> would she even think about wanting to see you naked, dude." I also seen her. With Cypher the other day, dude. Yeah, dude. And they really were weird. They had a picture of you, dude, and they yeah. were like drawing mustaches on it and yeah. shit, bro. It was fucked. He had her laughing, like laughing, yeah. laughing. And I heard that there was a gangbang with all of the disciplinary committee and her. So she's kind of like yeah. loose. She got you disciplined. You want to stay like this is some really <laughs> fucked up toxic shit. Anyway. Yeah, that's um, As for good advice, you know who gives me my advice whenever I put Kingdom Marks? Who? Yen Sid, dude. <laughs> You're telling me Yen Sid couldn't give me some good advice on relationships, dude? dude? It, is it just do a line of coke every time? No, like, he's just like, you have not yet mastered this relationship. Let me send you to a dream world where you can be tested. <laughs> and the hijacked. Mark, the mark of relationship mastery. Okay. And he hooked me up, dude. That's my answer. 
Uh, question of the week next week is actually already, it's already been etched. I forgot. It's been predetermined because Bijou Bree said, if Sora isn't the main character in the next Kingdom Hearts game, who would you want it to be and why? And then SB Cat said, that's the one they pick next week. Guarantee it. So SB Cat griefed her. So now we're going to go back to it. <laughs> I like what Jip did this week. Though. Yeah, and Jip tried to do it again, but Jip, you're almost... <laughs> It's, it's almost a uno reverse card where it's like now y- you want me to react that way so i'm not gonna react that way nice try though jip i like the i like the choice of gif also yeah afterward. the joker gif yeah, yeah. Jip, the caesar no. romero joker yeah and then poor poor bj Bree hadn't listened to the podcast yet and was like i honestly would love to hear everyone's ideas and he's like you, you haven't listened have you <laughs> and she was like yeah um but yes we are doing that this week so thank you for the question of the week and so we will be reading these live if you guys hit the donation incentive. Which, if you fucking don't, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> You're gonna make me I'm use my. Me. <laughs> You're gonna make me use my own money? No, I'm just kidding. You guys will hit it. It'll be easy. Anyway, Jason, thank you for being on this podcast with me every week. 115 episodes in, dude. That's good. And That's it feels good, like dude. the first time every time because oh, we gotta, we, we we gotta get those numbers. Ah, yeah. So there'll be a bunch of info on the charity live stream in Discord, but uh, please shoot in the twenty first at two p.m. and then all weekend. Yeah. Tell your friends. You hang out with us. You hang out with whale, possibly water. I don't know if he's he's tied to this or not, but I'm assuming I he is. I feel like he's. Maybe there's like an incentive or something. Yeah. <laughs> Water cage Water. joins stream he's $100. Not, he's not allowed on stream. He's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sorry, Water. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Tune in to Charity Live Stream. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we will see you live on Saturday, 5 p.m. for next week's podcast, episode 116. And we maybe we'll do like a little bit of a cheeky little tier list. <gasps> maybe we'll do a kingdom hearts dream drop distance character tier list oh dude that might be fucking just what i need dude Dude, it might be we'll see anyway thank you guys so much for listening and watching we will see you next week hit him with it jason may your heart be your guiding key thank you now leaving fuck off. Fuck off. Leaving. Fuck off. Oh, you sat on my ball My God, <laughs> it hurt <laughs> very badly.